Hello, a good day to you all. We are here communicating through this vehicle and we will speak about how you can reach, communicate in a perfect manner with God. That's it. You know that you who watch us and you have those doubts with regards to your faith, your relationship with God, your communion with God. You carry some sort of doubt, any sort of doubt. There are those who are in faith, live in faith and by faith and don't doubt and etc. and they advance. But there are those there are those who allow themselves to be led by doubts and therefore because of these doubts the person does not stand firm, is not firmed, up, firm upon the Word of God. I'd like you to know something. The Word, the Word, the Word is what unites human beings, the Word. So, for example, you and I, Esther, we saw one another, appreciated one another, but only when we spoke, only when we spoke, when we expressed our ideas, when we expressed our feelings with words, was when we could truly evaluate one another and then get married. Look, with God it is no different. This is so wonderful, so glorious. It's the essential because no one, no one can get involved with another person if there is no word, the word. So, with God it is no different. How can we have a relationship with God? How do we have a relationship with God? How can I be sure that He is with me? This assurance comes through His Word. I do not have to see Him nor touch Him, feel Him, but His Word guarantees that which I expect to happen. He expressed Himself in His totality, in His will, in His mercy, His love, so He expressed through this Word, which is our sustenance today. It is what gives us conditions to proceed through this Word, which guarantees life. It guarantees that you will not be alone. It guarantees that you may be guided by Him. You know, Esther, that the Word either unites or scatters, separates. This is the reality. When we marry, the Word unites us. When one divorces, it's the Word which separates. So a human Word has this power to unite as well as to separate. With God it is no different. His Word, His Word is one. It is to save, to unite, to rescue, to forgive. In summary, His Word is to bring about the good He wants to do to each and every one of us. However, when a person rejects His Word, 
So then this person is rejecting God. So this is called faith. And faith with intelligence, faith with reasoning, faith which has nothing to do with religion, it has nothing to do with feelings. It is what is written, this is why Jesus said it is written. And what matters is what is written, it does not matter whether it's good for me or not. What is important is what is written, so that will happen. And also it's important that through the word, when one starts to speak, you get to know that person. So God made himself known to us through his word, through his will for each and every one of us. So it's an expression of how important you are to him for to him for you to be in his word so through the word he brought into existence what did not exist and his word brings to existence what does not exist in us when we embrace this word when we put it to practice so this is called faith and Jesus speaks about this type of faith, the faith which involves the Word. Because when you spoke to me, I believed in your Word. When I spoke to you, you believed in my Word. So we joined the two pieces and that's it. We got married. And so like this, a new life began. A family, a home was born. Likewise, is with regards to the Word of God. When you read the Bible, it is God speaking to you. God is speaking to you. And when He speaks, He has an objective. The objective of setting free, of saving, of healing, of rescuing, in summary, the Word of God is specifically for us to have a direct and personal communication, an individual communication with Him. Jesus speaks about this in a more clear manner when He speaks in John chapter 14. He says the following, If anyone loves me, just look, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, which means love. The love which we delegate unto God is associated with keeping the practice, the obedience to His word. Jesus said, if anyone loves me. So, many people say, I love Jesus. No one's going to say they hate Jesus. But it's not faithful. He needs to be faithful. He needs to be obedient to His Word because what communicates us with Him is the Word. What gives us assurance of His presence is the Word. But the Word which is practiced, obeyed, exercised. So this is called faith with knowledge faith with intelligence. So many people live a senseless life. We could say a wasted, a ruined life because these people have had an emotional faith, a faith which involves feelings. And not even the love which Jesus wants from us is associated with feelings, is associated, but it's associated with the obedience to His Word. This is so wonderful. Because Jesus Himself said, if you do not keep My words, you are not keeping the Word which comes from God. He was only used at that moment to speak what God wanted. So we here as well, through His Word, are transmitting 
His word, his desire to your life, to express, to be part of your life and not to be ignored, to be brushed aside, but to be a participant of your life. So you who watch us this moment have this conscience, my friends, because when Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he associates the true love to the true faith. He associates the love which has nothing to do with feelings to a practice, the practice of his word. So when a person truly loves the Lord Jesus, he sacrifices his life, he sacrifices his being, his will, he sacrifices his sins, he sacrifices his life of promiscuity, fornication, of theft, of lies, of deceit. He sacrifices his life in order to obey, follow, mold this life according to the Word of God. This is called faith and this is the faith which pleases God, which you take action because you truly love Him. He who loves sacrifices. He who loves sacrifices. He who loves sacrifices His will in order to do the will of the one who is loved. Jesus is, ex is saying exactly this. If anyone loves me, he will sacrifice his will in order to obey my word. Which means the person who truly loves the Lord Jesus, he exits a world of sin in order to live a world separated, a separated life from this world. He will live according to the will of God. So this is the kind of person whom God blesses. This is the kind of person, it says, he says, just look at what he says, and my father will love him, which means the father will love a person who keeps his word, who obeys his word, who renounces his sins in order to live according to his will. So he says, and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him, which means Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So when a person, when a person has this understanding, Esther, he no longer needs anyone to make him happy because he has the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. He is already happy from the moment in which he left his will aside. He left his sins in order to follow obeying the Word of God. So friends, there is no way. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. God does not want to throw anyone in hell. The person himself is the one who throws himself in hell when he rejects to obey the Word of God, when he lives in sin. So the Word of God also separates, separates those who will live eternally with the Lord Jesus from those who will live eternally in the lake of fire and sulfur. This is the reality. And in the present we live in, He makes a difference between those who serve Him from those who do not serve Him. That's why you see people who claim to be Christians, but they don't have a life which matches. Why? Because they're not being obedient. So there's no difference between them and a person of the world. They live the same, they're suffering, no security, no peace. So the one who does the will of the Father demonstrates this love with assurance, with peace, with joy, a blessed life. So he demonstrates this love with all of this. 
Mas o amor já engloba But the love itself envolve a sua vida. Então quando ele diz assim, expresses all that ama, involves his life. So Jesus said, if anyone loves me will keep my words, and you does not love me does not keep my words. Which means there are only two types of people. Those who love, who love God, and those who do not love Him. But he who, who loves and who does not love? He who keeps, he who obeys, he who practices, he who lives according to the integrity of the Word of God. These are those who truly love God. As for those who claim to love, to know the Bible, to keep the Word of God, they have a vast knowledge, an enormous knowledge of the Holy Scripture, but don't practice, it's worthless. What good is it for a person to be religious, charitable, good, what good is it for a person to know the Bible from cover to cover, but he doesn't keep it? It's worthless. When Jesus was tempted by the devil, Satan himself quoted the scriptures, the Bible. No one, obviously, obviously not more than God, but no one in this world, more than the devil, knows the, the Holy Bible. So, to know is not a problem. To know the Bible means nothing. But one needs to live by it. One needs to live by it. He knows the Bible, but still he doesn't see he's being the devil. He continues being the devil. So, he says, He who does not love me does not keep my words. And then he concludes, And the word which you hear is not mine but the fathers who sent me. It's the same thing. When we preach the gospel, it's not our word which we preach. We preach the word which comes from God, from the mouth of God. So, it's not a matter of, oh, to speak about prophecy. Prophesy. Look, God is saying, it has nothing to do with this. When a person speaks the word of God, when a person preaches the Word of God, teaches the Word of God, he is already prophesying. He is already prophesying. Prophesying what? That which God spoke. He is repeating. So my friends, when you read the Holy Scripture, think carefully, God is speaking to you. And you have to observe well if your life matches with that which is written. That is, what good is it for you to know the Bible but live in sin? What good is it for you to attend a church but live in sin? What good is it for you to pray but live in sin? What good is it for you to feel love for Jesus? But you continue in sin. It's worthless. This is a fake, a, a lying love. Nobody wants it. Not even your boyfriend or girlfriend. Nobody wants this kind of love. Everybody wants a love of commitment, a love which sacrifices, which sacrifices one's own life, which places his own life according to what is written. And not according to what one feels or does not feel. So, Jesus shows here in the scripture that love has nothing to do, love in relation to Him has nothing to do with feelings. Kisses here, kisses there. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with practice. Practicing His word. This is the reality. He who loves me keeps my word. He who does not love me does not keep my words. He who keeps the word of the Lord Jesus truly shows his love because he abandons the words of this world. He abandons the ideas of this world which are contrary to the word of God. This is so strong. And the psalmist said, I kept your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. 
So when you keep it means you don't practice what is wrong because it's there inside of your heart that promise that divine promise of life and it's good to remember Esther although it's been spoken I used to observe you you would come to the church as well and you would take it would take you about an hour in the bus and you still had to walk a little bit to reach the church and you were always there with your mother always the two of you there and what did that mean to me that showed me the following that you were a God-fearing young lady you feared God you were thirsty to know God you had and still have you have still bro seven brothers seven siblings you're the eighth and out of all the seven siblings I only saw you and your mother so God gave me discernment you see this is the right person for you because she fears me she seeks to observe my word she seeks to live according to my word she's with her mother so the two of you at times would leave 9.30 at night and get about 11 p.m. at home subjecting yourselves to the dangers of the city you would still come in search of the word so you friends who watch me right now for example you who got married I'm going to still speak to those who have not gotten married those of you who want to get married you want to get married right you want to be happy so you need to find a person who thinks according to what you think if you are of God you live a life based founded upon the Word of God so you will seek a person who also has the same objective you will want to marry a person for example it's a young man you're searching for a young lady so you will look for a young lady who is God-fearing if you are a young lady in search of a young man so you will seek a young man who is God-fearing who walks according to the Word of God who honors his mother his father you honor your father and mother so all of this summed up for us to reach the conclusion that you were the ideal person so we did not get married just anyhow oh we liked one another you've got beautiful eyes etc etc no such thing we planned according to the word of God we thought according to the word of God so then what happens what happened it happened that our spirit our spirits matched because our word the human word carries the human spirit so your word carries your spirit my word carries my spirit so when we embrace the word of God we embrace the spirit of God and then there's no way for it to go wrong and the spirit wants to please God so you will choose a person who will not impede you from continuing this faith but one who has the same faith the same objective to serve God so when you serve God but you choose a person who has nothing with God then you are putting your salvation at risk for you also to lose actually at times a person says oh but I'm starting to like a pastor an auxiliary of the Universal Church this does not necessarily mean that this pastor this auxiliary is the ideal person for you because you don't know what is inside of him it's not because the gospel is preached that a person usually is of God no you need to see the fruits you need to see the life the young man is he God fearing does he honor his father and mother is he that person of character because when the young man or the young lady is a good son or daughter then certainly 
will be a good husband, a good wife. If he obeys the parents, he'll also obey God. Good son, good husband, good daughter, good wife. That's how it works. So, if you truly want to be happy in your marriage, or better said, if you want to sum up, to add up your happiness with another person, you first need to evaluate way carefully if that person whom you are liking, if he has, he has God's character, which means he carries within himself the character of the Holy Spirit, someone who is correct, someone who likes things correctly, someone who likes the truth, hates lies, a person who hates deceit. So, a person who has the character of God hates sin. He abominates sin. So, he gives up the will of his heart in order to do the will of the Holy Spirit. So, friends, think carefully, think carefully. You can verify, for example, how many youth who never had a father, a mother, they were chucked into this world and shame, only God to save them. And they reached faith. So through them, God wants to construct a new life, a family, a home of which God will be honored. But they need to have this character, the character of honesty, of truth, the character of goodness, the character of hating sin. So these things, my friends, are extremely important. So at times I keep thinking, the assistant is an assistant, I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, really? Oh, how wonderful. So you have the Holy Spirit. I do. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is a Spirit of Truth, right? Yes, I know the Holy Spirit is a Spirit of Truth. So how can a person who has the Spirit of Truth live in lies? Is it possible for a person to have the Spirit of Truth and live in deceit, promiscuity, and live in adultery and live in lies and live in deceit and live in theft and live a life like that? How? How? The Word cleanses, so one becomes a new person, so the old things pass, so he no longer lives that life. He has this Word which sets him free as the testimonies of those who had depression, the depression ended because they were purified, cleansed by this Word, set free, transformed, the soul is restored. So then, friends, you see that faith, the true faith, the supernatural faith, which is the faith, which is beyond the natural faith. The natural faith is like this. I like you, you like me, so let's get married. No, that's natural faith. This faith does not work. This faith only works at that moment. But then comes hell, the supernatural faith. The person has discernment to know what is behind those words which the person said to him. He does not deceive himself. He has the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit gives discernment in order for you to know whether that person is of God or not. And if perhaps you chat to that person and you discover certain things which do not match with the faith, 
So you who chat to a person and you see that he is a person whom you feel you have that you per, that perception that he's not speaking the truth. So for example, you are chatting to a youth and she says, no, I have the Holy Spirit, etc. Very well. But he observes the clothes of that youth. Hold up. How do you have the Holy Spirit? If you expose yourself, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. How will you, if you have your body as the temple of the Holy Spirit, you expose this body with indecent clothes? Because this is what happens in the carnival and all the ladies who, who dress clothes to draw the attention of men. But those who have the Holy Spirit, they have that perception, that discernment. No, this, this does not, this is not fitting. This is not fitting. I'm going to get out of this because you probably observed in me as I obviously observed in you the way you were, your way to speak, your way of getting dressed. A woman of God is not sensual. She's discreet, simple. She does not call attention. Nonetheless, she passes a security, faith, a pleasant presence, not anything which will scandalize. And there's something else as well, Esther. In the church, we do not impose rules. Look, you can't come with your clothes like that. You can't come like that. No such thing. The Holy Spirit Himself leads a person to dress accordingly. And if the Holy Spirit does not touch, does not convince that those clothes are not decent, it's because He does not have the Holy Spirit nor any fear to God. He leads a person to feel insecure under those conditions because He who has the Holy Spirit, Esther, he shares the aroma, the essence of Jesus. He who has the Holy Spirit passes spirit to whomever he speaks. When a person has the Holy Spirit, his thoughts are contrary to the thoughts of the world. Fashion to him means nothing. She creates her own fashion according to the principle, the ethical principles of God, God's ethics. So, when a person has the Spirit of God, his, his behavior is different. He does not live amongst the lifestyle of nightclubs, criminals, amongst the drunkards, amongst those who abuse drugs or use drugs. He does not live amongst those who do not fear God. He isolates himself. Even if he has to be alone, he'll stay alone. But he will not give up that which he received who is the Holy Spirit. And unfortunately, unfortunately, you, you verify. We have seen that many want a husband anyhow, so they dress sensually, as sensual as possible to attract the husband. However, when they attract that husband, he will be from hell, they'll get married. Then comes a pandemic like this one, then come, come problems, and not even jealousy. Jealousy is the least of the problems, Esther. But come those aggressions, family aggressions, Many people today are killing, are dying because they made a, bad, made a bad choice in marriage because now in this pandemic people are obliged to be together at home, stuck with one another 24 hours a day. They need to put up with the children, etc. And they're living with the person who has nothing with God. 
We live 24 hours a day together, isn't it, Esther? 24 hours a day. And there isn't this conflict. Nonetheless, there's peace in us. We are in peace. And it's what we seek to pass to you as well, my friends. I am not here trying to dictate rules to you. If the Holy Spirit does not touch you, I have nothing to do with you. If you are that person who truly is willing to give up your, your being in order to serve God with your life, above all, He is the first. He is a priority in your life. He is your true groom, your husband. So then, you will not want to put at risk this holiness which you are with others who live in filth. So friends, this is the reality. The wages of sin is death. 